Hello Spooky fans, I'm Spooky Byron and welcome to another video. This week we are going to look at these scary stories that will make you not go to sleep tonight. Make sure you go and hit the subscribe button and the like button for more cool videos like these. Uh, make sure to check my social medias out and let's get on with it. Number 5, The Ghost Woman Behind Me. This is by Dev Power from Reddit. Uh, the Ghost Woman Behind Me. This is by Dead Power from Reddit. Ghost Woman Behind Me by Dead Power from Reddit. My mum's side of the family lived in another town, which is about seven hours away. We would visit them time to time. My auntie's house was always haunted and strange things always happened. Like you always see ghosts or spirits. But this time she lived on a ranch. In the middle of nowhere, the nearest town were miles away. When I was eight, nine years old, my gran passed away. We stayed at auntie's house and later go to the funeral. When we visit the first night, my older brother and cousin stayed in the kitchen, cooking and talking. My mum, dad and I were in the far bedroom down the hall from the kitchen. I was watching some TV and my parents were falling asleep. My brother called me in the kitchen and asked me, Do you want corn on the cob? And I replied, No. And he asked me to ask mom if she wanted one, which she replied, No, sweetie. So I went back into the hallway and told my brother she said, No, she didn't want a corn. Big bro. But he just stared at me with these huge, wide eyes and said, Okay. I didn't think much how he looked at me. The next day, me and my brother drove to town to get something to eat. That is when he told me, when I asked mom if she wanted some corn, he said, I saw a woman standing behind you, and she followed you. Into the room. I thought it was mom at first, but it was a different woman. But she also vanished. Which spooked me out, so I told him. Mom and dad, we are laying in bed when that happened. That's when I thought why he looked weird at me that night. We didn't stay at auntie's house that night. We slept in a hotel instead. Ghost story number four. The ghost dragged me by Edward Baronet. Barnett. I must have said it night. I must have said your surname right. I was once working on a construction site next to a creepy old pond with a dark history. As the night guard, I was never told why. Well, I know why now. The moon was full and high in the dark sky. It was late August, around about 2pm in the morning. Everything was still and silent, until I heard a solid knocking noise. But the last knock shook the door like something heavy was knocking on it. I knew I was alone, so of course I was curious about the incident. I opened the door very slowly and flashed my torch through first. When I entered the room, it was very quiet, like the generator had been switched off. There was no noise or such, so the little noise that I felt, I had gone deaf. I looked out the window to the left, which I could see an uphill near an old Victorian pump house. I saw a silhouette of a miner with a glowing lamp which reflect in the darkness. The miner had evil, red, glowing eyes with an helmet. <laughs> the evil, red eyes were looking into my soul, and it urged me to come with him to the pond. I ran, I ran to the silhouette who had these very eerie, evil grin and said, I followed into the dark, old, creepy pond. I have to this day come back to tell you the story, and will you join me in the pond? Ghost story number three. 
called Ghost Bro from Huff Post. My house was built in 1904 and it is a single family home with wood frame setting on a concrete block foundation. I've been living in this house for about 12 years. Of all the weird things that my siblings and me have seen or heard in this house, it's one of my favourite, which you would love to hear. This happened to my brother, which was about 10 years ago. My brother and his best friends had started a garage band playing mostly Spanish rock, which is alternative music but in Spain. Hola Fantitico es Blesnantes. They would practice into the early evening and they usually finish around about 8pm. This was the time I usually show up and went to bed because I was the graveyard chef. This happened in late fall, so days were getting shorter. They just finished a long session when the decision to head to someone else's house came about. My brother handed his keys to his buddy so they could pack up the equipment. Everyone had filled out the basement, but the tricky part was that they needed to walk all the way back of the creepy basement, which makes you shiver in fear. Up the back stairs, through the kitchen door, and down the hall, into the living room and out into the front porch. Everyone was outside sitting my brother's truck, waiting for him. My brother's walking up the back stairs when he remember he left his pancake into the container sitting on a speaker in the creepy basement. He made a decision to go back. Now the creepy basement is not clean. With four sight lines. There are partitions made and the boiler and the main heating units are right smack in the middle. So after my brother walked back, he is about to receive his food container when out of the corner of his eyes he sees a silhouette of a shadow which was right at his vision and suddenly he felt a dreading, uneasy wash over my brother. We've been taught that if you're in the presence of a spirit or a ghost and you feel this bad energy, then quickly pray. He basically just told him, Hey, fudge you. I don't have time for this tea. My brother started walk back of the creepy basement and up the briskly stairs. The door closed and the lights just turned off as he walked out. <laughs> The light switch is the opposite side of the front door. He was lucky because the amber lights of the street were reflecting in the living room. As he stepped out, he closed the door, still holding onto his food container in one hand and jogging down the few porch steps. He walked towards the front gate. Our house resides far from the main street, essentially having a large front yard but no rear garage. As he closed the gap between himself and the friend's truck, he kind of smiled and thought things over in his head, mad at himself for spooking out when there was no reason at all. He climbed into the driver's side of the truck, putting on a seatbelt and getting ready to drive off the parking spot directly in front of the house. When one of his friends asked, Hey, wait, what about? Your brother, isn't he coming with us? My brother answered, What do you mean? He went to work early tonight. The next question they ask, So then, who was walking behind you? Number two is Rocking Horse by Hope Post again. One chilly night when I was about ten, 12. I had trouble of falling asleep that night. My bedroom was the entire top floor of Howe House, which was amazing. My bed and such were on the left side of the room, and my storage closet and playing areas on the right side of the room. I was laying in bed when suddenly I heard a noise on the other side of the room, which woke me up then. I seen a rocking horse begin to rock back and forward, but it was in a very 
creepy way. The rocking horse was sitting outside of my storage closet door. Then the rocking horse began to rock its way all the way across the room and then stopped under the ceiling night. At this point I was freaking out and buried my head underneath the blankets and went to sleep till the morning. By the way it was not a dream or my eyes playing tricks with me in the dark. When I woke up the rocking horse was still in the middle of the room. I did get a warning from my parents for being up out of bed at 3am playing with my toys when it was past my bedtime. My parents' bedroom was directly below the storage closet playing area and they heard the creaking of the rocking horse moving across the room. Last one to last, which is called The Shadow from Off Post again. And this is why it's number one. I was living in a house in Lagina Beach that's been there since 1920s. The history of the place had been a speakeasy or brothel and a house for smuggling illegal immigrants. One day, my new wife and I had an argument. I couldn't remember what it was about. Um, she walked down the blocks to get a cup of coffee and just to cool off. I was all alone in the house. The way the place was built was haphazard. There was a bedroom and living room on one side, then a bathroom with two entrances. On the other side of the bathroom was an hallway that had a window in one side and two bedrooms the other. From my bedroom, I could look across the hall into the bathroom and then through the bathroom and down the other hall or so on. I was standing at my dresser and I just noticed this movement out of the corner of my eye and I just turned where I seen the movement. Honest to God, this gave me goosebumps all over my body. 17 years later, a black tall human-like figure which looks like someone doodled it there. That's the best way to describe that freaky thing. I distinctly remember when I saw it. I wasn't afraid, just like WTF. Then it noticed me staring at it. I can't say it turned around. It just focused on me. That is when I got scared. I could not move or scream for my life. I was just frozen because it just stormed down the hall towards me and I had no idea what it was intended. As soon as it entered the bathroom, the door close to me just slammed shut. I screamed my lungs out and yelled my wife but she wasn't at home. I went outside into the bright daylight and didn't go back into the house until my wife got back which was 10 minutes later i did not believe in the paranormal but i do now thank you for watching today's video i hope you got spooked like i have and i uh, hope to see you guys again make sure to check my social medias out and also make sure to subscribe and click the like button for more videos like these i'll see you guys next week